I took this opportunity to share uh, my experience. It's a wonderful experience I had uh, last December uh, to visit uh, one of the holy places, I think the third holiest place in the world for the Muslim is Baitul Magdis. So today I will cover just some of the pictures and uh, this. You can get detailed actually description in, you can get a lot of books in the YouTube also. I, I'll just go through the pictures and give some of the information. You can stop me and ask questions anytime. So I'll cover today the Munshid al-Aqsa, the area, uh, the Nobel uh, Sanctuary, uh, the Masjid al-Kibli, the main mosque, uh, dome of the rock, and uh, the old part of the masjid. You, uh, all detail will be coming, and uh, the Masjid al-Umar. And other side nearby is Masjid al-Khalil, like where Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family's uh, shrine over there. It's in Hebron, Jerusalem. And then Masjid al Yunus. And then Cave of the Asab e Kahak, you know the famous cave. And the Spring of Musa and the Mount Nebu, some of the part. Okay, let's start with the Nobel Sanctuary. Like, you know, there is uh, always a conflict what is uh, Masjid al Aqsa? Or some of the says this is the Golden Dome is the Masjid al Aqsa. One is called the Masjid al Kibli is the Masjid al Aqsa. But basically, the whole the rectangle shape area is Masjid al Aqsa, or the Nobel Sanctuary uh, they called. The whole place is called Masjid al Aqsa, part of Masjid al Aqsa, or the area of the Masjid al Aqsa, the blessed land. And you can see, I, I can show you, this is the Dome of the Rock, this is the Kibli Masjid. I will go the detail when I go to the Kibli Mosque. This is the Masjid al Barak. There is actually four or five mosques here. Here there is a Marwani Masjid underground. This is the old Masjid in the basement. In the basement of the Kibli Masjid, you can find uh, there is a place for the Maryam alayhi salam, like you know, the mother of uh, Isa alayhi salam. So her uh, prayer place is also there, and the place where uh, Barak is uh, there. And at Chasen, you can see this is, uh, you know, the Baitul Maqdis of Jerusalem is a holy place for the, all the religion. So, uh, the nearby the Borat, the Masjid al Borat, the other side of that wall, actually the famous or the most holiest place for the Jewish, we call the Western Wall. So, that's part of the Western Wall. And there is the, uh, you know, the uh, Church of uh, Sculpture is other side. I will show, go over there. So if any question, uh, like you can ask. These, these names, yes. uh, the Masjid al-Burat, the Masjid al-Kabi uh, and the Khalil, they yeah. have given uh, from the time of, uh, since they, have, they are there? No. Or after? Yes. Normally, uh, the uh, five times prayer happening in the Masjid al-Kibli, but in the Juma prayer or in the month of Ramadan, they said like, you know, when it's full, then they actually full the cover, like in the underground and every place. And it is actually named every time, like, you know, some uh, in the um, uh, time of the Khulafa, some of the time, like, you know, when it's created, you just put the name, not in the first time, like, when. Yeah. Which part actually open for Muslim? Well, for Muslim, uh, it's open for all, all the time you can go. For the non-Muslim, they have a restricted time, 10.30 to 12.30, they can have a visit, and there's only one gate open, so that they can uh, go through. Another thing I want to show, this is actually old Jerusalem, you know, and the whole uh, old Jerusalem city is covered by a big wall. So, and Jerusalem, the, the Masjid al-Aqsa is just inside of that old city. So, old Jerusalem is mainly basically surrounded by a big wall. You can see in the photos, the big walls. And uh, Masjid al-Aqsa is in between that old Jerusalem. Uh, what happened to the Muslim Masjid al-Aqsa? It yes. shared by Jew and Muslim. So, is the Muslims are allowed to pray there? Or yeah, they are. No, 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 no. At the moment, the Jewish actually not enter here. Jewish have the Jewish soldier. They are actually monitoring the gate. So you can find the Jewish soldiers, uh, Israeli soldiers actually, in front of the gate. But inside, they have Palestinian guard as well. So Palestinian uh, security guard is inside. So they check whether non-Muslims are uh, visiting uh, the other the time of the non-Muslim dedicated. But rest of the time they're gonna pray all the time you're gonna go. There is no restriction. But after Isha prayer, they close the main gate, all the gate. Uh, so you cannot after Isha prayer, I think half an hour after the Isha prayer, they close the gate. 
and one hour before the function period, they just open the gate. So you mentioned about the sanctuary. Yes. Uh, the yellow line. Yes. Where is the uh, Masjid Laksa? This this is the whole the total land area. The total area is called Masjid Laksa. So there is the no, land. There is no Masjid actually. There is five Masjid, five or six Masjid actually inside. Called Masjid Laksa. No. Did you go as individual or part of a team? Did you feel secure there? I, I actually, the last slide will answer your question. Okay? I think keep the question later on. Just look, you can go to the part Okay. No, no. I thought, like, you know, it's related to these topics, then it's fine. Yeah, one question. You better with the dome of rock. You can make salah happening inside there? Just I say it, like, you know, the five salah, the daily salah is happening in the most of the Likibli. But in the Juma prayer, Normally, Juma prayer, the ladies are in the Dome of the Rock, and the rest of the place also covered by right? because there's a lot of people coming at that time. But normal prayer is happening only in the Masjid al So, which part of the Rock, what is the capacity of the Dome of the Rock? How big is it? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge, uh, I don't know exact capacity, uh, but uh, in the, inside the Dome of the Rock, there is a big rock. So it's not the full fledged, so you can see this around by area, people can pray. And the inside, I have a photo of the inside as well, so when I go through, I, I can show you that. Yes. Yes. Which, which side is the Tibla? This one. Yes. That's why there is called Mushtidul Kibli. The story, I'll tell you the story as well. Just to show, uh, mention a couple of uh, things for the Baitul Magdis. Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called its area as a blessed area, uh, land. This is, I think, one of the uh, very blessed land. And put main two objectives for this land is one is Mubarak, means Baraka come from it. And also it asks for Muqaddis. <coughs> Muqaddis, uh, the main meaning is the holy or blessed. And a couple of other uh, important aspects of Masjid al aqsa is the first Qibla of Muslim. And it is also the station of uh, Israel Miraj. And this is the only place where all the prophets pray together. So this is like, you know, definitely the Holy Spirit is Kaaba, and definitely after that, this is the third place, but this, this place has some unique features. So these are the things I am actually mentioning here. And another thing I need to mention, there, I already mentioned this one. Uh, the Masjid al-Aqsa is meaning is the farthest mosque. Like at that time, this is the, actually the farthest area, so they call it Masjid al-Aqsa. Okay, next slide. Masjid al-Kibli, because most of the people are uh, known this is the Masjid al-Aqsa, but they call it Masjid al-Kibli. Masjid al-Kibli, so this is, uh, I put it, the top area is the uh, outside area, and inside, this is the inside part of the Masjid al-Kibli. This is the, actually the, the brown dome, the picture. And this is the inside, this is the member. And, uh, and some, I think one brother asked whether there is a donation box in the mosque. I don't know why. So I put that donation box picture over there. So there is actually, so if you can want to donate, you can donate over there. And there is a famous hadith written at that donation box. Like I, I'll mention this hadith, it's, it's here as well. So Masjid al-Kibli, there is a thing, uh, one, story uh, behind Masjid al-Kibli. When Umar al like um, conquered, the Muslim conquered uh, Jerusalem at uh, 638 CE, then Umar uh, going to take the keys from Jerusalem and when he asked one of his, uh, his, uh, one of his, like, you know, second men, uh, sorry, companion, Kaab al-Ahbar, and he asked, why should I put a mehrab? When actually Omar go there, there's a rubbish. All the, put the rubbish, so he go there and start cleaning, and all the Muslims start cleaning, and put the clean, all the area. And then he said, where to put this, uh, where to put a mosque? And one of his um, companion, that come, uh, he's a former uh, Jewish rabbi, so he proposed, why don't we put behind the dome of the rock, so that, like it's the Qibla for the Jewish and the first Qibla and the um, Makkah is also the same way. So we can cover the both Qibla at a time. Then Umar Adil Ta'ala answered, like you know, you are talking like a Jewish. So what I will do, I will actually put the masjid after the rock. So there will be only one Qibla. So that's why he put that, uh, built this Masjid al-Qibli. 
and directly is in front of the uh, Kaaba only. And Moshid Hasla is the second house, I think, if everyone knows, like, you know, one of the um, Abu Zar, it's a Sahih Bukhari Hadith, just to mention this one. He asks, Prophet, O oh, oh Prophet of Allah, which masjid was built first on the earth? And Prophet said, Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, the secret masjid of Makkah. Then Abu Zar again asked, what next? And then he said, the masjid al-Aqsa. Then Abu Zar, how long was the period between two building the masjid? The Prophet said, 40 years. Apart this, after your prayers, anything, it is the time to pray, all the excellence in praying and this mosque. So he Bukhari. Any question about that, Masjid al Kibli? Okay. The Masjid al Kibli is exactly as it was built at, at the first time or is renovated? Uh, look, uh, it's happened in 638 when Muslim conquered and Umar Adiyalutana go and start. I think he built a wooden uh, mosque infrastructure, but after that, Crusader came, attack, and then burn, and then a lot of things happening. So, a lot of changes happening. If definitely, this is not the most what uh, Omar al Okay. Next one is the Dome of the Rock. I actually have a lot of picture of Dome of the Rock. That's why I put it outside and inside. You can see the outside part. It's the golden dome. It's a uh, top of the hill. Like the, the area is not the flat. It's a bit hilly. And uh, the dome is the top of the thing. So you can see the dome very far away as well. And this is, you can see very architectural things, uh, as we mentioned. So this part was taken by your camera? Yes. Uh, I have a lot of <laughs> photos. So I can, uh, okay, just to share the inside uh, information. This is, you can see the inside of the Dome of the Rock. This is the big rock and uh, everyone here, like, you know, this is, I think, uh, most Ulama and everyone agree that uh, it's our Mirage Prophet going to uh, in the seventh heaven from here, from up this, this stone, from this stone, uh, he moves to the seventh heaven. Very blessed and it, uh, they thought, like, you know, this is um, the stone from the heaven as well. It's a very big one, very big uh, stone. And you can go the underground of this um, dome, so that this is, you can see, like, you know, people are going inside, and inside there is a, like, praying area. You can find, they can pray. And this is mainly the inside of the dome. I can uh, share some information of the dome here. The dome actually built by Khalifa Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan, Ibn Al Marwan. It took six years to build and in, in, inaugurated in 691 CE. The octagon shape building was cutting edge at the time. It has like 25 meters um, high covered and this type of information. The rock is believed to be the place where the Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad Islam, Peace and blessings upon him ascended from the heaven during the night of the journey in Jerusalem. Most of the scholars said that. Okay, and another interesting story is the Jewish believe Prophet Ibrahim salam, saw a dream about that sacrifice, about the son of this is Jewish belief, not Muslim belief. Like just to share the same thing we believe for the like you know Isaac at uh, in the Makkah. But they believe that dream happening in here. And they said, like, you know, Ibrahim want to um, sacrifice uh, his son Isaac or Isaac here in, the, in that area in the rock. So they, they according to Jewish, is a blessed area as well. Any question about the Dome of the Rock? Okay, we can go to the next part. Old masjid and basement. That's why I say, like you know, this is the old masjid. Means when the prophet camps and and the pray, most of believe that they actually pray in this basement area. And you can go under uh, the masjid al kibli and and the side of the masjid al kibli there is two entry. So you can go inside the mosque. 
like you know, underground of the basement of the mosque, or Kibli mosque, mosque in Kibli, you can say. You can find like you know this type of uh, inside area. There is a staircase, and you can go and find. At the moment, they have a library, and uh, according to the UNESCO, there is a uh, 1300 or 13,000 books is there, and uh, very uh, rare ancient manuscript is there. So very rich library. You can see a lot of students are uh, studying over there. This is called the Marwani Mosque, one of the mosques, like you know, uh, Khalifa Marwan, like you know, he actually cleaned it up. Previously, the, when the crusader uh, uh, captured this one, they used as a stable, like you know, and they believed that uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam used as his horse uh, stable, so they used that place, but Khalifa cleaned this up and prepared a mosque so that they put a name of under it. This is the very old part of the Masjid al-Aqsa, this, this is the one. And people believe, most of the ulama and everyone believe that this, uh, this is the main pillar, the ancient pillar is from the Sulaiman alayhi salam. And at that time, definitely they thought like, you know, it's done by the jinn. But at that time they don't have the technology to move this type of pillar. It's like a two to three story building kind of height and very big. You can have two stone, like the two uh, pillar, similar pillar. So they uh, normally call this actually done by at the time. The, the, this is the oldest part of that uh, mosque, you can say, the original part. They call this almost 3,000 years old and done by the jinn. And this one is the interesting part. This is actually the tank, oil tank. At that time, like, you know, they don't have the electricity. So even prophets say, like, you know, there is a hadith. Like if you cannot donate, you can actually donate for the oil for the Batimagdi. So a lot of people donate for the oil. So when they come, the oil comes, so they have to put the oil, right? The storage. There is a big, big tank. So they put actually uh, still there. At, at the moment, when the electricity comes or so the technology develops, there is no oil at the moment. So they are now collecting money only, no oil in this. <laughs> Exactly the same, the, the hadith I want to share, I think that one, um, part of the Masjid al Kibli, you can see this is the underground part we see, uh, the first slide, and this is the uh, up, upper slide, like you know, upstairs of the um, underground Masjid, of the old Masjid. This is the area, this one, the second pictures, this picture is actually for, uh, for part of the Maryam alayhi salam, like you know, this, uh, she is the, I think, only woman mentioned by name in the Quran, and she is the like, most pious woman in the world as well. So. She prayed here, her prayer here, like you know, when uh, Marim alayhi salam in her mother homes, her mother actually prayed uh, for a boy and he uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if there is a boy, like you know, he will, uh, like, she will dedicate her kids to for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's you know, prayer. And, but when she got a girl and then she also keep her promise and uh, sent her for the prayer and the Marim alayhi salam, like you know, she prayed here, this area, so they actually sealed that area, but you can take picture and see this. This is the corner of the, this, this corner, the corner of the Masjid al-Kibli, you can see there is the area, area of the Mariam alayhi salam. And this is side of that uh, part, the same area of the Mariam alayhi salam. And this, the side of, uh, like, you know, they put a point, this is called part of the Masjid al-Burak, or Burak, Burak place. Like, they assume this is the place where Prophet alayhi salam uh, tighten his uh, Buran and uh, the interest I, I think uh, most of you know about the like you know uh, Burak it's definitely a creature which is a longer than a donkey and a smaller than a mule it's a white and it can jump it can jump up to the vision like you know what we can see so that a prophet like ride on it come to here with that one from uh, al Haram to Baitul uh, Magdis Jerusalem and uh, he tightened up, well normally the prophets tightened their animals to pray, 
So this is the place where they uh, tighten their animals and then go for train to Raqqa. And after the Turaga, he saw all the prophets, like 124,000, whatever, like, you know, all the prophets are, like, you know, praying behind him. So this is the uh, time and this is the area. They assume this is definitely not the exact one. They just put a, like, you know, put a ring just to show this is the area somewhere prophet used that one. So, any question? So, all the prophets behind him is all of them came down or? Uh, I uh, I think I can ask Sheikh Yusuf to have a <laughs> detailed lecture about Israel Miraj, then you can get the better answer. But uh, as uh, Sai Hadith, you can uh, know from uh, Prophet Salah Islam said, like, you know, when he uh, complete. Uh, in, uh, in the Hadith, Anas ibn Malik said, like, you know, I was bought a Burak, which is an animal I already mentioned. And after that, I entered the mosque and prayed two rakats and then came out and Jibreel brought me a vessel of wine and vessel of milk. I chose the milk and Jibreel, Jibreel salam, said, we, you have chosen the natural one. We know the hadith, so this, this is the area we are talking about. Okay, if any, there is no question, we can move to the next slide. Masjid al-Umar. Some people actually confused about the Masjid al-Umar, the Dome of the Rock. Some people said like, you know, the Dome of the Rock is Masjid al-Umar and Abad or the Masjid al-Kibli because he established that mosque. But there is a separate mosque which is called Masjid al-Umar. And there is a small story when Umar al go there and at that time he's the ruler, like you know, Khalifa. So they are showing their um, holy places. And there is the holy sculpture, like you know, the Christian holy place, uh, the church of the uh, holy sculpture, where they believe uh, that Jesus is crucified. So very close to the Masjid al-Aqsa, very close, walking distance, you can go uh, that one. So they are visiting, they are showing Umar al the, the church. At that time, Zohar prayer times come out, and then the rabbi, the bishop or, uh, who is in charge, he offered like you know, Umar al to pray inside the church. Then Umar al said, no, I will not pray. And he actually mentioned, had I prayed inside the church, the Muslim coming after me would take a position of it and saying that I had prayed in it. So maybe Muslim can come and there will be a collision, like, you know, there is a problem. So he don't pray in the church. What he do, he throw a stone from the church and nearby, definitely put the nearby and he prayed that area. After a long time, I think uh, people build a mosque over there, very close, adjacent to that uh, holy sculpture, church of holy sculpture. So they call it Masjid al Omar. And so this is not part of Baitul Maqdis. No. Sorry, yes, but it's part of the old Jerusalem. Yeah, I show you uh, the old Jerusalem. This is part of old Jerusalem, but this is not part of uh, Baitul Maqdis or Masjid al Aqsa. They still put there is a you know the notice kind of things and the. Here, it's in Arabic, the meaning mainly uh, for the non-Muslim, they cannot live here at that time, non-Muslim cannot live. So with that, when Jerusalem, they conquered, they put uh, non-Muslim, they first give the time, you can come to the Muslim, they can, you can leave. And then there's a big story, just a cut shot, like, you know, they put the rules. So if you want to leave, you have to put that zizia, how much, how many, how the rules, Umar al that's the written notice, honestly speaking, coming from the, like, you know, the, uh, uh, Amirul Mukmini, Amirul Mukmini sent, like, you know, so they put it into the Masjid al Umar because at that time Amir is, uh, Amir Mukmini was Umar and he signed it. So they still put a, like, you know, stone and the main there. And inside is the similar, like, you know, you can find a similar mosque area. Okay, so next one, Masjid al Khalil. So we are now moving from the Jerusalem area. This is Jerusalem, this is actually in Hebron, but we have to take a drive or bus or like, you know, to go there. Masjid al Khalil. Masjid al Khalil actually, um, you know, there are four prophets Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isaac alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, and Yusuf alayhi salam. So, four prophets and their wives. Shrine is there, 
Basically, when uh, Ibrahim al Islam's wife Sarah died, uh, Ibrahim al Islam bought this land and as a family burial. So, but later they put a mosque, and definitely there is a like you know, there previously there was I think uh, three or four uh, mina like for the Muslim, Jewish, and Christian and other religion like you know who they believe. So later they just uh, put only two mina. I think uh, Salahuddin Ayyubi when he uh, conquered Jerusalem again and he just kept two. Uh, from the Muslim, this is the Muslim member, and this one is for the Jewish member, and it's restricted. So you can, you can find, when you go there, you can find how heavily secured this area. You can find soldiers everywhere, even in the mosque. Uh, I can show. You can see if you like, you know, in the mosque there is some no no carpet area, means soldiers can inside visit inside as well. So they can march. They are going to march into the mosque so that they can uh, view like you know what's going on something. So they put uh, some I think two color, like you know some areas without like carpet so that like you know because soldiers definitely they don't move their shoes or boot so they come with the boot so they are going to march still heavily under uh, Israeli soldiers this area. And this actually you can uh, you can see the shrine or like you know tomb of that Ibrahim alayhi salam like you can see. Ibrahim alayhi salam, so the Shen and the other prophet, and this actually mainly for the wife, uh, they have the name, I think. Two, uh, four tomb is in the Muslim area, and uh, Yusuf alayhi salam and Yaqub alayhi salam tomb in the Jewish area. And the wife's uh, area, these, these are in the, between the mosque, so you can find uh, in the Rafia, the wife of Difaka, sorry, Difaka is the wife of Isaac, and uh, I don't know the name of the other, they don't mention here. So there are the two tombs. And Muslims and Jewish are allowed only 10 fixed days to visit each other. So usually Muslim cannot go to the Jewish area, and Jewish people cannot come to the Muslim area. Only they have 10 fixed days so that they can visit each other. And otherwise, you have to like pray in your own, your own area. So these 10 days in India? Sorry? Is it ten, those 10 days in the year? Yes, 10 days in the year. As you are from overseas, would you allow it, allow it both ways? No. Only, Muslim. yes. Only Muslim will be allowed into the Muslim part, and Jewish will be allowed in the Jewish part. Unless, like, you know, those special 10 days, you cannot go there. You can see, like, you know, there is the, the area, the part, but you cannot enter. Because they're heavily, like, you can see all electric fences and I, I told you, like a lot of soldiers, a lot of security, so you cannot even move here and there. There is a specific stairs, okay, you have to go there, do these things, so yeah. it's very restricted. Have you mentioned those 10 days, which are No, sorry, I don't have that information. Uh, this is structure actually built by uh, Herod, I think the first century BC, Herod building did not contain uh, when um, uh, Muslim came. So Muslim, when Muslim controlled, they built a uh, mosque, a roof mosque, before uh, Herod built actually the um, uh, side area, not the roof. So when Muslim conquered at uh, 637 CE, so they put a proper uh, mosque over the, at that time. And when Crusader attacked in 1100 CE, they actually uh, Changed it the name. They put it Castle of Saint Ibrahim. So they changed the mosque to church. And again, when Muslim Salahuddin Ayyubi, like you know, conquered Jerusalem again in 1188, so then he changed the name and they just put it one part of the Muslim, the mosque, uh, Masjid al Khalil, and the other part for the Christian. Any question? Is there any uh, like authenticity regarding these shrines? I mean, because in obviously yeah. this professor before Professor Salam, right? Yes. He never mentioned in a hadith, is there any hadith, like, you know, I never know any hadith that he said, okay, in Baitul Maghdis there is a the cover for Ibrahim or Yusuf or this. I think these are like, you know, I mean, when you went to the Sheikh, did he explain that in any of this? Mm. The Sheikh has said this. Yeah, Sheikh actually don't say like, you know, there is no like hadith or Quranic uh, proof. Yeah. 
but uh, when you know some something some information you can take that biblical uh, or hebrew taura or Injil yeah, information exactly. so if you follow those information these are these are the place where the definitely not exact places maybe not but the, these are this is the place where so this information actually taken from the old testament yeah Okay, another masjid. This is a big farm, Masjid al Yunus. We know, I think, uh, Yunus alayhi salam has been famous about uh, the, you know, he lives, I think, 40 days in the belly of a um, fish. Just uh, some information. This is actually not a dome. So they actually put a dummy. I don't know why they put the dummy. Basically, this area, Yunus alayhi salam has a house for almost one year. Okay, now I, I can complete the story. I, uh, uh, when I complete the story, you will understand that, you know. Yunus al Islam actually mentioned four times in the Quran, and when actually, you know, he is commanded to preaching the truth, his areas, and he leaves his areas, which is, an, and he moved to the other places. He boarded a sheep, and we know the story, like, you know, that sheep down and they throw it from the sheep, and he, uh, a big. Um, where is eating by him and he prayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive now after 40 days he is forgiven and they throw it out um, the well vomit and he come out from the belly of the um, well in this area and due to stay 40 days in the belly of the well uh, the acid you know he destroyed most of his hand and the flesh so he was very sick he actually then came this place to take rest, to take a stay, and so it takes actually one year, almost one year, to get uh, like you know, get healthy, <laughs> get healthy, or get ready to move. So after one year, he moved back to his uh, area where he has commanded to preach. Uh, that area is actually nowadays called Mosul in Iraq, after the uh, river of the Tigris. So that his area, so he actually um, died over there and buried over there, but he just spent I think one year, so on the memory of Yunus alayhi salam they prepared a mosque, I don't know why they put that tomb, uh, we ask question, uh, we don't find any answer, those the imam of that mosque uh, give a very uh, good lecture about like you know we should like visit uh, Masjid al-Aqsa and feel their pain and this type of things, very good lecture. In English? But, yes, in English, yeah. Lecture in English. Yes. This is the Imam. Huh? Yeah, he is the Imam of that mosque. Okay. Now the cave of Asab e Kaham. It's in the Jordan. Now we move from Palestine to Jordan. It's in the uh, like you know, very nearby is Amman city. It takes between 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, taxi ride from uh, the capital city. You can go there. There is a mosque, and this is the famous cave. You know the Surah Kahaf and um, the young boys, the the king at that time, the pagan king. They want like you know want to kill them because they don't want to worship him or worship the idols. They want to worship only one Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and so. They take here, they come here. At the moment, actually, you can find the road and you can park your car and this type of tourist visitor place. But you can understand, you can see the resident areas with a hilly. So you can see them with a big um, hilly area. And definitely, I don't know how they're going to come here and how they're going to put. Unfortunately, I, uh, I think there's a time limitation, like, you know, when they open the door and inside there is nothing. They said, like, they put some uh, ancient coin and some bones. Like definitely not there. Like you know, though they said like you know maybe like not sure. Honestly speaking, it's authenticated. <coughs> but uh, at that time we are in a hurry, so you know if you go with a group, so you cannot uh, take everything exactly. So it yeah, it doesn't cover the time, so we can see the inside. So we took the picture also there is a mosque. We take we do a cover there as well, and we take some pictures around it. So how authentic is that? Because the cave of Kahaf is very old. I think another opinion, like you know, they um, caught, uh, I think in Turkey as well, they said like you know, uh, Allah knows best. <laughs> they said like you know, they, 
I think there is a story as well, like you know, when Romans, uh, you know, Jewish actually came to Prophet Sallallahu and asked questions about these three guys, and Prophet actually said, okay, I will answer it, and he for, forgot to say Inshallah, and then I think 15 days there is no answer. Later, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed that Surah Kahf, and in though uh, I think um, Bible and other books mention the name but uh, number. But in the Quran, there is no specific number, whether they are three or seven, like, you know, they said, like, you know, it may be three or five or seven. They assume it's seven or something, but the, the, the area they assume, like, you know, is a... And uh, I think this is the last thing. <laughs> okay, Spring of Musa. <coughs> And Mount Nebo, two places. The first three, actually one uh, spring is very is in Jordan. Just to say, I think a lot of you, a lot of you know about the spring of Musa. You know, um, Musa alayhi salam throw his stick on the stone, and then twelve uh, spring comes out, and they, that's why Jewish have twelve tribes. So this is one of the spring, and. Like the other one, the, it's like a zamzam. Like you know, from that time still the water is coming. The water is coming from where? Nobody knows. What we have advised from the Sheikh Yasir Khan, because I visited Sheikh Yasir Khan, he said, you can, you can drink this water, no problem, but don't drink as, remember as a holy water. Because Jewish uses the holy water like Zamzam. So we, for us, the only holy water is the Zamzam. So we can drink the water, there is no problem, no restriction, but not think as a holy water. But it's, it's really miracle. There is a stone, and in the, between the stone, the water come, coming up all the time. And people are like, you know, you can see they're filled up with the things. And for the Jewish people, it's a very, like, holy, holy water or something. Is there a mosque? No, no, it's not a mosque. This is the area, actually. This, uh, they just put a tomb, three tomb. Uh, this is the rock. And this, actually, the rock. This rock is actually here. And under the rock, you can find, like, you know, the, this is the area uh, the water is coming. And people are feeling water, like, you know. And, is there anything holy or what? The Sorry? Is the guy feeling the water? No, 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 they are feeling the water. Yeah. I think uh, you already feel the food, so he just uh, reducing some of the water. <laughs> and this is actually the second one. It's in the Mount Nebo. So the second spring, you know, we cannot go there, like because you know you have to walk kind of things. Like there is no, I think there is a road maybe, but the, the, for uh, our guide shows us from. Spring, you can have very little water, like this spring is flowing uh, from here, like you can show it's like a fountain, small fountain kind of things, small water you can uh, uh, see from the distance. So there are 12, so I actually, like you know, the group will see the two. So one is in Jordan, this is in the Mount Evo, Mount Evo is part of Jordan as well. So you can see from the distance, so there is another one, but I don't know about what are the 10. So actually these are the holy places for the Jewish. And this area actually, this is the famous area, I, I think you know, like when uh, like the Balakun Mount come to Musa alayhi salam and he slept and uh, he go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say you are like you know, slave, don't want to uh, die, ready to come. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is big hadith, but just to say and then Musa alayhi salam want to actually very emotional about Jerusalem. So he wants to see the blessed land of Jerusalem. So then he requests Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can see uh, the place of Jerusalem. And you know, Prophet Abu Huraira mentioned, like, you know, one of the Sahih Hadith said, Prophet said, if I were there, I can show you where Musa is buried under the I think, red sand hill beside the road. So a lot of people assume, okay, this is the area, this is the area, but definitely the area is very nearby. And this is the place you can see. I can zoom out there, you can see that you can see the Jerusalem here. If it's a clear uh, sky, a clear day, so you can uh, see the dome of the rock or the Jerusalem from here. So before, like, you know, before the death, like, Musa alayhi salam is here to see the blessed land. That's, that's why they put some, uh, like, you know, monuments and these things, but basically this area is holy, most holy for the Jewish people, rather than a good place to go there and visit. Like, you know. So is that where the Moses uh, No, no, no. They, uh, they say, like, you know, they um, prepare one in Jericho. Jericho is nearby Sabah, we can say. 
like near the area there is a Zeriko. Zeriko is the oldest city in the earth, uh, means I think thousand years old of uh, civilization, the fast civilization is one of the oldest <gasps> civilization, is called Zeriko, Zeriko is very near uh, here, so they, they assume there is a tomb over there for the Musa, but most of the scholar, even the Islamic scholars say, no, Musa is buried nearby Mount Nebo, so is not yet defined exactly where, but nearby this area, nearby this mountain. So this is in Jordan? This is in Jordan. A bit far from Amman, uh, I think it's, it takes half an hour or one hour drive from here. So you can actually see uh, Jerusalem from here? Yes, uh, 80 kilometers from here, but they said like an incline. Now, from hill you can see like, you know, uh, the area. But definitely you have to be a We try a lot with, with even the zoom and things, but honestly speaking, we can't see. Because there is a big cloud, so they said like you know very rare you can see, but you can see definitely you can see in a clear day. You can see. Okay, next one is the tips. Uh, this is Sheikh Yasir Kadi. Like you know, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, visit with him. Uh, he, uh, the, yeah, yeah, it's me. <laughs> just to prove, like, you know, I, actually they are man. Otherwise, you, you guys say, oh, you download some pictures and you just take the presentation. So I put, okay, okay. I put last picture, like, you know, last slide from mine. Just some tips, like, you know, Israeli areas in the border areas, so you have to be very modest. So don't argue with the soldiers because you can find the soldiers' age, age is 16 to 18. They have big machine guns. I don't put those uh, photos. Couple of guys took their photos from mobile. From our group, I don't take. So you can see uh, it, the gun is touches the ground, so big gun. So and they are asking very stupid questions or something. But you have to be very, very calm and quiet. Like you know, that's the one tip. Take one close because at that time December, I went there last week of December. So you can see me is very warm, but there is winter, so you have to have a warm clothes. And cash because the very like you know less shops accepted credit cards. But you can use US dollar, every shop uh, except US dollar. So it's better if you have a cash. Uh, you can convert uh, your money into the cash from the airport or a big money exchange. And always follow the groups because you know, in Israel and uh, Palestine, if you uh, move along, then it's highly likely a soldier will ask you questions uh, regarding, like, you know, they might want to check your passport and always keep your passport as well just for the security. Otherwise, you know, uh, anything can happen. Better to move with the group. Because the the guy, the guide, he can speak Hebrew because I think the soldiers cannot speak English. So if there is any problem, anything happen, uh, if there is a problem, either they can shoot you, another they can uh, take you to the police station. Highly, very less chance they will take you to the station, they will shoot you. This is the easy one. So, yeah, so be polite, be easy going and be move with the But it's not that dangerous, like, you know, honestly speaking, we don't feel any time threatened by these things. But there are a couple of times they check our passes, a couple of times they just stop us, check IDs, whether you have visas or something, that's it. And I put, like, you know, some uh, costing things, if anyone interested. Because, honestly speaking, the Palestinian people request us, those who have the means, like, financial and physical and everything, so that, like, you know, you can join, uh, you can visit. So when, when we actually visit, you can do help. Uh, they actually don't want the donation kind of things. You, if you can uh, buy items from their shops, they actually love that one more. So that, like, you know, they said, like, you know, we'll go nowhere. We'll, we'll protect most of the laksa. So how can you help? You can help, you can come and visit, so that you can, we can show the Jewish people or the Israelis, look, we have brothers outside. They are coming here, they are like, you know, when a lot of, when I actually take this opportunity, like uh, visiting, I saw in the Facebook, a lot of people comment, how guys you guys spend money to the Israelis? But honestly speaking, we give money, just the, I think, the visa fee, because uh, the border control is by the Israelis, because the hotel we stay is a three-star hotel just because of because the owner is a Palestinian. So we do the shopping all from the Palestinian. Because in the old Jerusalem, there is four quarters. I think I forgot to mention. You can find the Muslim quarter, there is a Christian quarter, Jewish quarter, and another one is Armenian quarter. Armenian quarter. Thank you. So you can visit like, when you 
when you change the quote and you can find the difference means like in the Muslim shops you can find the uh, the fridge magnet of Masjid Al Aqsa and when you just the next shop is the Christian quarter you can see there is selling the fridge magnet for the Jesus the like you know church of the Holy Scripture so when you see the shops you can find like which one is you don't have to tell like, which one is Muslim shop and which one is Christian shop or the Jewish shop. Who, who told you this thing that you can spend this money in this way over there? Local people they talk to yes. you about this thing. Yes, yes, mainly the guide. The guide said to you. Yeah. Is, is he Palestinian? Yes. Yes. So you you're buying the stuff from them and then you are like. No no you, you know you in, in the old Jerusalem in the old Jerusalem you know the uh, the big uh, shows um, the border when you insert in entry into the old Jerusalem the border area like in the big wall insert into the big wall you can find a lot of shops a lot of shops fruits like vegetables. Clothes, everything, like you know, souvenirs, you can find everything. So you can buy from there and they actually that appreciate that one. Like you know, you guys they're selling, they're getting money. Because most of their business they closed. So they can't actually sell. They want to visit the break or like uh, as much as you can. Exactly. So they said like you know, don't afraid. They will the most irritating thing they be like you know, we have a group of hundred people and I'm the hundredth one, they give the clearance in the border. They just wait, I think, six hours in the water area, just sitting. They have a free Wi-Fi, don't worry. So you can. But definitely keep in mind they're watching what you are downloading or watching. So, but that's the thing they are playing with games. Like, you know, they will take, make you irritate so that you can pass, do something wrong and they can do that. This is like where they, are, where they want to get out the culprit from. They want exactly. to find out like, if somebody is a troublemaker. Exactly. They can find out. Exactly. Way. Another thing they will ask, what's your name? What's your father's name? Where you are born? Your father born? Your grandfather born? You, initially, we don't understand. A lot of things happening, like, you know, a lot of people are talking, like, you know, they have this type of sort of question. What's the point? Where is my grandfather born and something? But later, we find out if you, your father, or even your grandfather born in some tribal area like Gaza, Ramallah, like, you know, West Bank is actually the big area called West Bank. So, these areas, or even in the Palestine, so, like, if you have a US passport, UK passport, or Australian passport, doesn't matter, you're not allowed to go. If any of your, like, you know, father or grandfather or someone leave or born over there. So that's why they want to check. Okay, Sazakallah Khair.